Hush you. Hush you. Good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Or if it's your first time, welcome to the channel. I'm your host, G2 Jake. I, uh, I document what it's like to high run a, a, the, I don't know, premium yo-yo company. Um, these are not your Duncan Imperials that you would pick up from Walmart when you were a kid. But they are very cool. Same category, I suppose. You can do a lot more with them than you used to be able to if you're new here. But anyways, this is what I do a lot of my time. I assemble and test a lot of yo-yos. Um, it's kind of fun. Yes, it's a thing. It's not easy to describe to you. It's not easy to describe to people when I tell them in person, what do you do? And I say, I'm a high-end yo-yo company. I own a high-end yo-yo company. Um, and we go down the rabbit hole of, you know, wait, you have a, a lathe in your garage and you make them? No. And we go down, I design them. I get the raw pieces back here. I'll get them anodized. I have a few different shops for machining and for anodizing. And then I assemble and test them and document the process while I'm doing that. So that's what we're doing today. We are working on a... This is basically the assembly line for the a respawn, which is our responsive, semi -res it's responsive. Um, you can play it unresponsive if you'd like, but it's going to ship responsive. Um, modern responsive yo-yo. So it's aluminum, machined, and it uh, will come with a lubed bearing so that it will be tug responsive. It'll come back to your hand and you can kind of focus on different tricks with it. It's a lot lighter than the standard yo-yos today's world um, because it is responsive and not unresponsive where you need some more spin time to complete unresponsive yo-yo tricks. This portion is when we are assembling the response pads. And this helps the yo-yo return to your hand. The string needs something in there with some friction to grab onto so that it can wrap back up tightly because you need a tightly wound string to throw a yo-yo with speed. If it's loosely wound, it's not going to unspin and give you that torque and momentum you need to complete complete to do modern yo-yo tricks. This specifically is our reverse rainbow road colorway. It's something you will only find specific to our brand because of the way the colors are in the splash. It's, it's kind of like a kaleidoscope is how I usually describe it. It's um, a bunch of different colors mixed together. It's not a consistent fade from one end to the other. It's pretty random. And that's what I love about it. It's just there's a bunch of different fades inside the pattern. And they're all so unique. And you never know what you're going to get. I love it. This is a colorway that we only do once per yo-yo. Um, sometimes less if we if it's something that we just you know not all the yo-yos have reverse rainbow road but we will not do a second run of the same colorway so everybody that gets one of these has got one of the only run or the only yeah the only batch in this colorway you'll say it's not like um it could be produced again i often get asked after that conversation other questions do you compete? Um, like, are you one of the one of the best in the world? No, I don't compete. Um, I'm a decent yo-yo player. I would say that uh, of people that yo-yo though, like most people, after they get into it for a while, they will be better than where I'm at. Um, we have a team that we sponsor, 
and some of them will compete or create content or tricks and most of them obviously are better than me so that's that's where the uh, team comes into play is because they're all better than me and it helps promote the brand throughout the country uh, for the most part and so then we get into contest talk a little bit and it's cool to say that Worlds was around here it was in Cleveland twice because I'm in Ohio and most of the time people can relate to something being in Cleveland after that they'll either ask what Stephanie does because they don't understand how I can like how you can work for yourself or, or make your own business um, so sometimes we go down the road of well I have a patreon account that is focused on helps me run it as a monthly subscription so anything that you buy that you get monthly it's kind of like that except for I've got a site that I'm using to send out high-end yo-yos to people once a month and so there is a a commitment to people buying a yo-yo every single month which is what helps keep a consistent income coming in and why I've been able to have this as my sole job for a year now um, it's a little bit there's different stressors with it it's a little bit stressful trying to get something awesome out every single month but it's a little bit nicer knowing that you also have X amount of yo-yos already sold for the next month but sometimes it's just hard to get that order fulfilled in time so that's where the stressor comes in this one's incredible sometimes they'll ask if I have one with me most of the time I don't I've been trying to make it a habit to carry a respawn with me because then that way I can let them play with it as well because it's responsive. But I haven't gotten to that point yet where I remember. So, always got to be better because you never know <laughs> what the day is going to hold and when somebody might uh, somehow comes up. I mean, that is a question when you meet new people, they almost always ask, what do you do? It's kind of the easiest icebreaker to start talking. So it would always be cool to have a yo-yo with me as an example a lot of times they'll ask me for the website or the Instagram and take a little stroll and that's pretty cool sometimes people will find the YouTube this and then uh, then it's a little bit awkward on my end just because I feel like I don't know it's a little different making these videos and thinking that someone in your neighborhood's watching him <laughs> but it is what it is it's fun it's part of the process uh, it's kind of what makes g2 special as well is the documenting of the process all of the uh, content that comes out along the way you guys are here for the journey you guys are here for the ride and i appreciate you being here and hopefully you appreciate uh, these videos talking about the process in and out daily trick videos tutorials now if you remember I was talking about these all being so unique especially on this colorway so what I like to do in this process after the pads are in is I kind of like to go through and match up halves a little bit so that the splash pattern is kind of similar not necessarily in color but more so kind of um some splash comes out thicker, some's more stripey. So kind of just to batch them in a way that they're a little bit closer on both sides. You're never going to get it perfect. Some are just just not going to be like some are going to be so unique the other side is not going to match quite perfectly or be that close overall. But for the most part I just like to have a little bit of consistency on both halves if I can. At this point in time, we're doing the assembly, which involves putting an axle in and the bearing. And specifically on this yo-yo, 
The bearing is getting a little bit of lube. Most yo-yos, the bearing will remain dry so that it can spin freely. But this one, if you recall, we want it to be tug responsive. So we add lube to slow the bearing down so that it'll help the yo-yo return to your hand just on a tug. This whole process is a little bit of kind of what makes G2 special you're watching here. Um, the fact that I know the quality control is so high because I'm doing it personally. Every once in a while, yes, a, um, a glitch or a B-grade product can still slip through the cracks when I'm doing it, but it's much less likely when I'm doing it myself to let any of that happen because when you get a G-squared yo-yo, I want you to just enjoy that unboxing and that full experience. And there's nothing kind of that leaves a worse taste in your mouth than when you get that brand new product you're excited for, or if you, you showed up to drop time and you landed a new G2. Um, you checked out whatever it is, 20 seconds when we're able to get one, and then you get it in the in your house and there's an issue with it. That is not something I, I ever want to happen and that's why I take the QC so seriously. Because um, you're so excited for that product and then to get one that, that doesn't pass QC is just such a letdown. And I don't want anybody to experience that. I want you to enjoy getting that product and just that um, that unboxing, I want it to be awesome. So I do all of these personally myself. There's definitely options out there that you don't need to do these yourself, but we do just to make sure we, I, just to make sure it, it works correctly. Part of the process too on why we don't have as many yo-yos going out is because it takes me so long to do these portions of the assembly and testing and boxing. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the process because I know a good product is getting into the hands of the customer. So now we're kind of at the most, like the, 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 the funnest stage, but also the most time consuming, most stressful, and actually, over time, it can turn into the most tedious. This is where I do uh, testing. So I've got all the yo-yos assembled. And we've got 15 to start with. The reverse rainbow road that we talked about earlier. It's always going to be a limited run of uh, functional art. But we're going to go through and test them. Sometimes it's, it's smooth pickings and... they they come back it's a good batch a lot of times it's where i'm swapping a lot of halves trying to create a pair that ends up to be smooth now smooth if you're not from the yo-yo world um, can mean two things on the string just when it's spinning do you feel it spinning um, if you feel vibe when it's just spinning on the end of the string that's terrible but you also can measure qc by putting your fingernail on the edge of the yo-yo and you really, you just want it to feel like there's no vibration. Perfectly smooth halves, like that one, it's good. Um, with the D-bearing yo-yo, you get a little bit of vibe. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but it's still smooth overall. And also while I'm testing these, I'm kind of thinking about creating a new trick because I usually try to post a trick, new trick, come up with a new trick about once a week. Um, lately, it's probably been one every two weeks. It's just hard. You just run about a, of ideas to make new tricks. That's so satisfying. After this process, um, we'll box them up, get them ready to go, and they'll go on the website. Uh, these are gonna go up September 2nd, Thursday. 8 p.m. Eastern in the G2 store. Ooh, so right here, you guys just heard that. If you don't test those individually, 
never would have found that issue. It's honestly just a bad machine spot. At that point, the limited release becomes more limited because now I know we have, that's just a bad part. It can't be used at all. But if I wasn't touching, testing these individually, personally, that would have slipped out and whoever got that would have been pretty annoyed, upset, um, frustrated. So we ended up with 13 passing, two trash grades, and that's just products or I haven't, I've got to mess with them a little bit. Maybe there'll be glitches I can sell as um, B, B grade products, but that's right on pace. Um, I usually expect for 10% to come back not usable. So a little bit higher than that, 15 units, uh, too bad. Ended up with 13 passable. So we'll end up with nine or 10 on the website. Uh, we'll throw a couple on Patreon raffle style so that they get a chance to get one in case uh, they don't want to show up to the drop. And then, um, I don't know if, usually on rare things like this, we'll do a silent auction. I don't have, um, I don't I don't feel like I'm going to do that on this. And um, I'm just gonna do the, the Patreon raffle, the website, and then we'll hold one back for the draft. I do a yo-yo draft, which if you know sports, it's, it's kind of like that so i just hold back a yo-yo from each release and eventually we do a draft pull, pull people's names out and they pick from the pool of what's available but just let me show you these boxes real quick we do um full art for each box and ryan did a great job on the respawn just uh just looks good there's our Caution contains functional art. Um, you know, some people display these, some people play them, some people do both. It's really whatever your cup of tea is. We're trying to create something that is highly functional, but also looks incredible and can be, it is, a piece of art, basically. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you tomorrow, same place, same time.